Hey you and welcome. My name is Mike and in this old video what we're gonna do is um We're gonna look at you know just the big old hurricane. You know, you know one of those big old hurricanes as you do uh, We're gonna look at one of those but more specifically What happened during one? Crystal McDowell was a realtor in Texas. Canada better watch its back by the way Texas is quickly climbing the ranks of a uh, crazy case locations in 2017 Hurricane Harvey hit Texas like well, like a hurricane. And in the midst of this disaster, Crystal McDowell disappeared. You know, if you wanted to do something uh, yeah, a bit naughty, wouldn't uh, during a hurricane be like the best, the best time to do it? Um, so, wouldn't it be interesting that she would disappear during one? Was this a cover-up? Much? Kinda? Maybe? Let's give it a go. On Friday, the 25th of August, 2017, Crystal McDell got up for another day on the rig. She didn't actually work in an oil rig, but uh, well, this is Texas though, so. That morning, she was leaving her boyfriend's home, hopping in the car at about 7.35 to get to the office in Baytown, hoping to lash out a few houses, as you do. Bad time to be a realtor, though, as the number of uh, houses in Baytown it's about to be reduced, like, by a shitload. For the past week, there had been a nasty hurricane forming in the Gulf of Mexico. However, that day, the 25th of August, Crystal McDowell never made it into work. In fact, nobody heard, heard from her at all that day since she left her boyfriend's. That evening, when her family were all gathered up for a fight, no, they weren't beating the shit out of each other, it was uh, Mayweather and McGregor, that's when her family started to become concerned. Nobody had spoken to her all day, they couldn't get true to her, she wasn't answering her phone. And it's a bit like, huh. Crystal McDowell was 38 years old. She had two kids, a boy and a girl, with her husband. Well, ex-husband Stephen McDowell. They had divorced after 10 years of marriage. However, as her home was being remodeled, she was still living with her ex-husband. Ooh, <laughs> awkward. Uh, yeah, very awkward because Crystal had a new boyfriend and her ex-husband Steve, who she was sharing a home with, still, uh, still wore the L ring in his finger. He, uh, he was taking, taking a bit of time to get over the L divorce. He didn't take it well and he made sure she knew it. So, early on the 26th of August, Crystal's family reported her missing, and the police popped by Crystal's home, the home she shared with Stephen McDowell. He was asking them, you know, what's wrong? What happened? I, ha I haven't seen her at all. Is she okay? I didn't see her at all yesterday. I was in Walmart shopping that morning. At times, you know, she spends the nights with her new boyfriend, so maybe you should, uh, give him a goo too. However, when speaking to old Stevie, the police got, you know, that usual something-off suspicion about him. You know, ex-husband, maybe a little bit jealous. Something, something. So, next up, the investigators went to speak with Crystal's new boy toy, who was also off. One thing was that neither the husband nor boyfriend reported her missing, and her boyfriend was the last person to see her. Uh-oh, she leaving his house that morning. So, it was weird that he never reported her missing, and it was also weird that her ex-husband she lived with and shared a home with two children, he never reported her missing either. Her boyfriend was Paul Hargrave of Robson's Jewelers. That means more beautiful diamonds at attractive prices. Hi, I'm Paul from Robson's Jewelers. Come in now to have us handpick your special diamond on our upcoming Antwerp trip. Looking to buy a ring? He's your fella. No better buckle. With Paul, Crystal was happier than she'd ever been. The night before Crystal had gone missing, she had gone on a date with her, her, with Paul, her new boyfriend, and then spent the night at his gaff, and then was out the door the next morning to places unknown. He saw her the morning she was caught on his home CCTV. The last time he spoke to her, he was getting ready for a wash when she was out the door. So, in these cases, you know, where a woman goes missing, it's nearly always the man 
in her life, who's the who's the L uh, who's the L Baba Ganoush? And in Crystal's life, she had two, so it was kind of complicated. And in fact, her life was quite complicated. And all of those complications, you know, multiply them by even more complexity when you factor in a friggin' hurricane that landed right in the middle of a missing persons investigation. Morning, the National Weather Service says they've not seen anything quite like this. There is drama, there is misery, there is bravery here. As you noted, at least two people have lost their lives. Thousands here are stranded, and with the rain expected to continue well into the week, this could turn out to be the worst flooding disaster in U.S. history. Hurricane Harvey was a Category 4 storm that slap-bang walloped Texas, making landfall on August 25th, 2017, the day Crystal went missing. It was the biggest hurricane to hit the United States and other nations in 12 years, something that meteorologists said was a matter of not if, but when it would come. Harvey had begun as a tropical wave off the coast of Africa on the 13th of August and was slowly building and building. Initially, it was thought to be a Category 1, but quickly intensified to be a Category 4. On the 24th of August, people were bracing for devastation. Tides would rise by 12 feet. We have a two-story home, and on the first floor, it's up to here. It would eventually cost $125 billion in damage. I'm devastated that everybody's lost so much and it still keeps continuing to rain. And lead to 103 deaths, direct and indirect, in the US alone. And it was in this that Crystal McDowell disappeared. Crystal McDowell was born in 1979, named Crystal after... Hi, Crystal Meth. Lovely stuff. Yeah, uh, both of Crystal's parents died when she was 11, within six months of each other. Uh, they both died from... Well, they did name her. At age 13, Crystal was abducted by a predator, held in a chicken coop, assaulted, until she managed to escape. She eventually moved in with her family, her uncle Jeff raising her. So not an easy start for poor Crystal. She would eventually, uh, you know, meet Stephen McDowell, who was a friend of her uncle Jeff's. She would fall head over heels for him, and they would they would marry and have two kids together. Hey, Crystal, how you doing? Great. How Good. are you? I'm doing fantastic. What are you doing today? To jump out of a perfectly Jumping good airplane. Jumping out of a plane, making your first skydive. Whose idea was this? Steve. Steve, your idea. So if she gets hurt, I'm blaming you. All right, buddy. He has a really good life Oh, cool, perfect. Are you covered in that policy? <laughs> yeah. Sweet. You're looking a little shaky there. Are you feeling okay? I think so. Think so? Uh oh. I think Matthew oh, broke no. your harness. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. So, it was so fun. I what was the best part? Again. The whole thing was the, the whole best thing? part. Yeah. Shortly after their marriage, Crystal got herself a job as a flight attendant with Express Jet. She would fly around the country, join the Mile High Club, not with her husband. Yeah, Crystal had lads, and lassies, by the way, all over the country, uh, and would continue to be romantically involved with both men and women throughout her marriage. As you can imagine, Steve, um, when he learnt... She would eventually divorce Stephen. As I said, the divorce was mainly from her side. Stephen wasn't too keen on it, and she started dating Paul. In fact, shortly before she vanished, she was supposed to go on a cruise with her two kids and Stephen. And then, poor Stephen, he got the boot and she invited Paul instead. So when she went missing, there were so many, like, it, the investigators essentially had to go through like a blender full of shit in the middle of a hurricane. So by the 27th of August, the investigators, you know, they had their cork boards out and their red strings, ah, yeah, ready to go, ready to rock and rare to go. Unfortunately, going was not an option. Overwhelmed emergency responders were forced to triage tens of thousands of calls, taking care of only those who needed help urgently. 
I know people are trying to reach 911, um, may, may, may not be getting a, a response. Um, I understand that. The system, there are a lot of people who are calling. But let me ask, uh, for a gift, let's give preference to the life-threatening calls. Baytown, where all this was happening, was soon underwater. The police had to join the emergency services in rescuing people. A missing persons case was soon off the list of priorities. So, with the cops not having the resources, her family started posting as much as possible on social media. And then something quite strange happened. One of Crystal's family members, who was obviously posting as much shit, you know, on Twitter, Facebook, and all that, she got a, a message from a complete randomer saying, Crystal's car has been missing since she was last seen driving out of her boyfriend's, you know, driveway. I think I, I, think I know where Crystal's car is. She just sent this random message with a picture saying, Crystal's car is at a motel. See, this random person had received this Snapchat and sent it on to the people looking for Crystal. This was at a Motel 6. However, as the roads were rivers, the family and the police, when they were able to, had to arrive by airboat. The car wasn't exactly well parked. Doors open, keys inside. It became pretty clear someone was hoping the car wouldn't be there for very long if you catch my drift. See this black car right here? This Mercedes? Two people got out of it, and it doesn't belong to them. In fact, if it wasn't for the hurricane, the car would have been long gone. So, when the car was able to be towed to the cop shop and examined, well, nothing was found. No traces, no evidence, no forensic whatchamacallits. And so, a week passed, the storm receded, the place was in shambles. This morning, police are searching for a Texas mother who mysteriously disappeared before Harvey hit. Crystal McDowell's last Facebook post was, stay safe out there. She wrote it the day before Harvey made landfall. Crystal McDowell's family says she was scheduled to pick up her two children from her ex-husband's home, but never showed. That was the day before Hurricane Harvey flooded streets in her neighborhood. And with law enforcement trying desperately to keep people out of harm's way, this storm may have provided the ideal climate to cover a crime. How confident are you that she was not a victim of this storm? I'm very confident. She is not a victim of the storm. We, we've, we feel very, very confident that she's not a victim of this storm. These are the last known images of Crystal, taken from security cameras in her boyfriend's home and a day before the hurricane. She was leaving for two appointments as a real estate agent. Crystal's uncle, Jeff Walters, works in the same real estate office. What do you think happened to her? I don't know, but I know that she's not one to leave and she's she would always be in contact with us and her children. But there was little to nothing, you know, to go on as far as what happened to Crystal. They, they were still shit out of luck, and so a Texas Ranger came in. He started from scratch. Stephen McDell was brought in. Hadn't seen Crystal since she left for her date with her new fella. He took a lie detector test. He failed with flying colors. However, the family, you know, were like, we've known Stephen for donkey's years. He's a... He's a good skin. He's a good fella. But, you know, maybe you should look at uh, her new fella. Don't know much about him. Don't like him. Preaching him, personally. I told her myself. He reminds me of him a lecture. And he creeps me out really bad. What about him? I don't know. I mean, she liked him. She loved him. But she liked your guys. I don't trust him. You know, what does Paul have to gain by hurting her? I don't know. He must have just not go. What does Steve have to gain by my I honestly believe she loved her to the point of no return. You know, I mean, he, he, he said he didn't do this. And I'm going to tell you, I'll be up for truthfully. I don't believe, I don't believe, I believe someone killed her. I, I believe I'm working a murder right now. Yes. I just got to figure out who did it and where she's at. And so Paul Hargrave was also brought in, and he too failed miserably. So, over a week since Crystal's disappearance, the search began in earnest to try and find any clues as to where she could have gone. Unfortunately, those clues, and maybe a possible body, were more than likely swept out to sea by, you know, the receding, the receding waters. And so, 
Good luck finding anything. Over 100 people would take part in the search, but it wasn't looking too good. So the lead detective, Texas Ranger, went back and needed to decide on who to focus on, ex-husband or new boyfriend. Both equally suspect. Come on, it's gotta be one of the gruesome twosome. And so, what do we like to see? That, my friends, is CC TV. The motel where the car was found. Well, didn't cameras show the car being backed in to where it was found the day after she went missing, the 26th, as the rain began pouring down. Then, five hours later, at a gas station right beside the motel, a security camera caught. Who would it be? Oh, Stevie McDowell. They saw his car, and it appeared to show Stephen parking his car, but not getting any petrol. Instead, he leaves his car and walks over to the motel. It became clear pretty quickly that he probably ditched her car there, hoping it would be stolen. But, you know, they didn't know how he left her car there and then got home because it was quite a distance. So if he ditched her car at the motel, headed to get home that morning. And so more footage was discovered showing a lad having a grand old time biking through the storm. Stevie owned that bike. The investigators noticed it when they went to interview him when Crystal was reported missing. He also said he was in a Walmart the morning she disappeared. There just so happened to be a Walmart across from where her car was left. And he was buying a bike. So he dropped off the car, walked across the road, bought a bike, then came back hours later, popped the head in, stolen, ah, bollocks, still there. And so Stephen was brought in again. Hey Stevie, that's, that's you in the camera, right? We can, we can clearly see it's you. No, it isn't. no doubt in my mind that, that that's you. I want to show you that. I'm guessing you'd like to see that. He eventually admitted it was. Kind of. Some of it was, some of it wasn't. But he was still adamant he had nothing to do with the disappearance and, you know, the investigators had no body. Then, interestingly, the police, speaking to friends and family as they had been through doing the entire time, they learnt that shortly after the divorce, Crystal and Stephen's divorce, which had taken place about six months prior to all of this. Stephen took it not well. In fact, he took it really, really badly. So much so that people said he had more than once mentioned murder-suicide of his wife and two kids, ex-wife. So there is that. And then also around the time of the divorce, Stephen, one day Stephen just took the two kids and just left just disappeared. Crystal obviously freaked out. She called 911 and he eventually returned with the two kids. You know, charges charges weren't filed at all about him abducting his own children. But um, the police began to become worried that he might do something it's a little bit drastic. And so the kids were quickly put into Child Protective Services. Stephen, he didn't want a divorce and he definitely didn't want to know that his wife was flying around the country having affairs all over the place. And he definitely didn't want to see her with her new boyfriend. So, wasn't too happy about that. So, the police basically saying, you're not going to see your kids again if you don't talk. He began to spill the beans. Bad beans. Real bad beans. He eventually admitted to the police. She arrived home after she left her boyfriends that morning to see her kids. Crystal and Stephen ended up fighting, and he strangled her to death. Wrapped her body in bags, put her into the boot, and dumped her. You've confronted her at different times about those affairs. Yes, confronted her. And she told me to stay home in business. And she says that I'm not dominant enough to better her. That's what she says. Were you fighting when that happened? Yeah. Is that when she told you that she didn't love you anymore? Yeah. And did you snap? Yeah. Did you mean to suffocate her? No. It just happened. I didn't know that. Either. I love her. And how did you suffocate? <laughs> Squeezed her. Come on, under her like this. Okay, like a, a chokehold or something? 
Did she say anything when that was going on, or did you fight, or what, what happened? <laughs> she said I was scared of her. How did you eventually know that, that she was no longer alive? Stop the food. But he wouldn't say where, not until he got a sweet deal. No death penalty, which was agreed to. Stephen led them to where Crystal was. It was way out in the boonies, a place that was five feet underwater about a week before, and there wasn't much left. So Stephen was charged with the murder of his ex-wife. Though, you know, when it was gonna come to trial, Stephen had one card left to play. Sudden passion. Sudden passion is a law in Texas, and it means passion directly caused by and arising out of provocation by the individual killed or another acting with the person killed, which passion arises at the time of the offense and is not solely the result of former provocation. Basically, if you were provoked into killing somebody, you'll just get a little slap in the behind. No harm done. So, what was Stephen gonna say? She provoked me into killing her. She killed herself, really. I mean, it was suicide. He hoped, you know, this would lead to a uh, slap on the wrist and he'd be scot-free. Maximum 20 years, maybe even out in two. I mean, look at the interview. She made him her bitch. And one day he snapped, had enough, was mad as hell and wasn't going to take it anymore. Did it fly? Did it fuck? In June 2019, he went on trial. When he took the stand in his own defense, he said, you know, she came home that morning. She was hysterical. Pfft, women, what? She started fighting with him. She was going mad. And Stephen just tried to calm her down. You know, gentle, gentle husband. You know, he just tried to calm her down. Give her a hug. Give her a big old hug. And she eventually, she eventually went limp. And uh, she died. So he hugged her to death. Which, of course, happens all the time. The jury, in fact, didn't think that happened all the time, and found his story to be unbelievable. He was lying. It was premeditation from an angry, jealous ex-husband, and he was found guilty. It's 50 years for you, boyo. Funnily enough, the hurricane, which added so much to this case, so much complexity, also helped crack it, as it prevented her car from being stolen and led to Stephen McDowell. A man who was bitter and jealous, Crystal, didn't love him anymore. A woman who was seemingly loved by everyone she met. Crystal McDowell's life began and ended with unimaginable hardships. Hurricane Harvey caused widespread devastation in Texas and in the surrounding countries in the Gulf of Mexico, but I bet nobody was more pissed off at it then Steve, you know, the guy who's just hugging his wife, you know, and then had this little plan to uh, maybe get away with it scot-free, you know, and he would have, he would have gotten away with it too scot-free if it wasn't for that meddling category four hurricane, bloody hurricanes. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will see you as always real soon in the next video. Take care of yourselves. Mike out.